Okay, we are recording. Hi there, I'm Dr. Calloway. Um, today I have an awesome practitioner out of Pleasant Hill, California. We're going to be talking health and wellness and a little bit of belief, about beliefs and spirituality. And we'll see where it goes from there. And I will let you introduce yourself. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Dr. Alondi Steck. I'm a chiropractor, as Dr. Calloway said. I practice in Pleasant Hill, California. I have background in a lot of different types of movement arts, like synchronized swimming, yoga, mobility work, and also chiropractics in that. I have some background in Reiki, some energetic practices like that, and yeah, health and wellness. <laughs> That's awesome. So I've talked to a couple different people in different ranges of the healthcare field. Um, and I, each person has a slightly different bent, but what do you, what do you define health as or what's your definition of health? Mm -hmm. So my definition of health is something that I remember Dr. Monique Andrews at Life West when she was teaching neurophysiology level one, course one, she gave us the definition of health as the ability for someone to adapt, adaptability being able to respond, be in conversation with what's coming in so there's no blockages so that there can be a response coming up. There's no stagnation. Things are dynamic. That's a great definition. Good job, Dr. Mo. Yes, good job, Dr. Mo. <laughs> That's right. So as you walk around Pleasant Hill or the area that you live and work, do you think people are healthier than you were when you were a kid? or sicker, or where do you think the direction of health is in your community, and then the United States or the world at large? These are some big questions. So yeah, <laughs> yeah let's start small. Let's start with my community. So Pleasant Hill is part of Contra Costa County, which makes up, that's made up of Concord, Walnut Creek, Pleasant Hill, and I'm not sure if I'm missing what other little cities are within that as well, but those are the bigger ones. And in this community here, that county, it's very, very active. There are so many sports for kids to be playing, swimming, soccer, basketball, synchronized swimming, gymnastics. Um, for the more of the adult crowd, there's a lot of CrossFit, there's Pilates, there's yoga. So my point in sharing these things is that the community here is very active. People put a lot of good movement into their body. There's beautiful hiking trails. We have Mount Diablo. We have the Briones in Lafayette. We have um, the Lime Ridge open space closer to Mount Diablo. Like people are out and about and um, moving in their bodies. So in general, in that realm of of health, people people shine shine with that. You know, they are very active um, and people are curious you know to learn more about their bodies they have most people in the communities here have um, they're fortunate enough to have good incomes they can support themselves to live here they can take part in these athletic endeavors which are not very cheap and and so they're they're curious to learn more about their bodies and see what's possible so I don't know if that's totally answering your question, but in some sense. No, yeah, that's great. And I am a avid user of those, at least the trails. I actually yes. did a long run the other day on Mount Diablo. Oh, nice. Uh, tangent. Uh, most people listening to this won't know this, but Morgan Territory, you know, yes. out yes. there. I take my bike out there. I, mm -hmm. I got lost out there. Awesome. Ran through some old farmer's property. And he, and I was about at mile 15 or 16 of running and yeah. the, if, to run back would have been equal. So he, this old, this old nurse, retired nurse, um, drove me back into like Walnut Creek. Cause he's like, you're going to die, dude. Oh my God. So luckily he didn't shoot me. He helped oh. me. Yeah. It's kind of wild back there. <laughs> um, so you use a very unique, uh, form of chiropractic. Mm -hmm. um, tell me a little bit about that and tell me like a typical conversation you will have with a patient explaining that not all chiropractic is the same. Mm -hmm. So in my style of chiropractic, I practice through the lens of biogeometric integration, BGI. Um, this was a framework of looking at the body that was developed by a practitioner named Dr. Sue Brown. In this 
form of analyzing the body. It's creating a map, a connective map of how is the body holding tension from foot to head, front to back, side to side, looking at the whole 360 of the body and getting a real feel of where is there a pathway of tension that's holding the body into a distorted posture that's locking it into a positioning so that it's not free and movable and adaptable. So in biogeometric integration, we're looking for what, what's called a subluxation tract. So subluxation in chiropractic this is where this word comes from, right? It means there's a disconnect. There's some type of interference within the body that's breaking the connectivity of the whole. So in biogeometric integration, I'm looking for the pathway, the subluxation tract, and becoming very specific with how is the body being anchored into this positional arrangement? Is it is the anchored point found in soft connective tissue? Is it found more into the muscular tissue? Is it specifically in the tendon? Is it in the joint space? Is it in the organ structure? Is it in the cerebral spinal fluid? And so once I'm finding where's the anchor point, where's the focal point of um, this harnessing the subluxation tract through the body, how is it refracted through and what is the best way to start to release the, the trap so the body can integrate it and get its normal motion back, its, um, its connection back. So the nervous system is everywhere, right? We have um, 70 trillion cells in our body, more or less, they say, right? And the nervous system's talking to, to all of this. Um, so you can go straight to the spine, like a lot of traditional chiropractic looks like, spinal adjusting. Go there and you can access a great part of the whole just by going to um, that, that locale. But sometimes, well, but because the nervous system is in any part of the body, you can touch it, the better access point might actually be going to the foot to free up a spot in the spine because of this connectivity of everything, right? Um, there's a really wonderful picture by Alex Gray that shows that he like, I mean, there's more than just Alex Gray's picture, but I love his artwork that shows um, the outline of the nervous system and you can see the whole shape of the body is apparent just by looking at this network of nerves you know so yeah so in my practice working through the lens of BGI I'm working with the relationship of parts through um, the subluxation tract and being specific with where in the tract is the the focal point and how best to connect into it to help the body to recognize what's there and start to release and integrate the storage in that spot. So what type of person shows up in your office, in your practice? I have a lot of types of people. I have a fair amount of CrossFitters that come in because that's a big community for me. I love CrossFit, so <laughs> I have that community out here and so they all know what I do and they come and receive my type of care. I'm also um, a coach with a really elite synchronized swimming club, the Walnut Creek Aquanuts, and those athletes come and receive care from me. Not all, I wish all of them were here, but a handful. And I also have um, a lot of middle-aged people who are coming in, like parents of my friends, who are active, um, like they you know, enjoy putting good movement, movement in their body, maybe they're retired and they're um, you know, later, middle-aged later in life at the same time, and they, yeah, are like curious for a way out of like what's showing up in their body, like what else could be possible to help bring ease and freedom and connection. Um, I have some teenagers in my practice, which is pretty cool, just who are, who are kids of some of the parents that I get to work with. And yeah, so mo the bulk of my practice are more of the athletic population. They are doing some type of movement practice and that's how we found a connection and that's how they came in. That's very cool. That's a huge demographic in this area that mm -hmm. fun. That's right. CrossFit, yoga, Pilates, all that fun stuff. Yeah. Well, fun for some. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so go a little, I'm going to ask a little bit deeper question. Okay. How does your belief system affect how you take care of patients? Mm -hmm. uh, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that brings up a few things for me. 
Um, let's see, where is the place to start? So I believe that when the body is, has freedom in it, when there's no constrictions, no limitations of movement, it's the body's going to perform really well. It like the body is designed to be in movement and the movement creates a dynam dynamism and the movement creates an adaptability. Like we opened our conversation with like, what is health, right? It's ability, one's ability to adapt. Well, what makes one, what makes you adapt? Oh, well, the movement through the tissues, through, through the, um, the joint spaces, through, um, the structures that are the physical components of the body, right? And then also, like in chiropractic, we have um, our, our triangle of um, like what creates interference in the body. Okay, so there's physical, and that's maybe more what I was talking about with the physical structures in the body. And then there's emotional, so it's our thoughts. Like how is our, how is our thinking creating restrictions in our physical body, right? Because the way we think, our body is going to become the... Um, the, the template, the map, the expression of what we're feeling. And then our posture starts to conform to our thoughts and our beliefs. So when I'm working with someone on the table, I'm, I believe that if I'm able to really connect into the nature of the structure, like how is it holding itself in space? What is its relationship to the parts around it? How is it being traced to the whole body? What is the quality of tension stored there and how does it want to be interfaced with to start to put it more in motion and when I really connect into that and start to set help the body recognize the truth of its state I, I believe like the body one is going to open up the physical structures are going to shift and change and then also the mind inhabits the body and the body is related to the mind the thinking starts to change so so the whole system is like upgraded, has a different way of being. So um, anyway, so I believe, yes, like what do I believe when I'm, how did you ask it again? How does your belief system affect? Okay, so how does my belief system affect um, the work that I'm doing? Um, it helps, so I really believe in movement is intelligence for the body and connecting into how is the fixation stored when I connect into that, then the movement will become restored. That's, a, that's an awesome answer. How, mm -hmm. So you talk about mindset a little bit. You talk mm -hmm. about thoughts. How do you uh, keep your mind, obviously you keep your body sharp through coaching and CrossFit and things of that nature. How do you connect with yourself? It's mm -hmm. a good question. So um, I do a meditation every morning. And in the tradition that I'm trained in, or have, I guess, training <laughs> with meditation, they, the tradition is described that a whole cycle of prana, so a cycle of life force in the body takes 24 minutes. So I sit for a 24 minute period and I do different centering techniques to calm the mind and arrive more in my body and then use that to then drift into a state of being. And when I'm able to access, come into the practice of being in a state of being with the meditation practice, when I show up with my clients, I'm able to pick up and receive the way that their body is wanting to be worked with to find its integration, its ease, its stability, its balance. So it's pretty, it's pretty simple, um, this morning practice of meditation, right? But, you know, the simple things can bring good, good I don't know, sweet rewards, right? So it's nothing fancy, but it definitely helps me a lot. That's a really cool thing to do. Most of my practice, I've been practicing 10 years. Mm -hmm. I can't believe that already since I'm only 23, so. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. Um, <laughs> you I, most of my practice, uh, the technique that I use is an upper cervical practice, but we won't go too far into that, uh, was mostly trying to be educated and I didn't allow 
universal intelligence, we'll use that word since it's a chiropractic thing. Yes. I didn't allow that to run the show, run the practice. Yeah. I tried to be very um, systematic. When someone walks into the office, I say this. When someone calls the phone, I say that. And, and I still do a lot of that because I've been doing it for 10 years. But over the last, since I moved back from Washington and towards the end of the, my practice in Washington, uh, I work with a life coach and we've been trying to get me to be more in touch with the spiritual universal intelligence side of things rather than me trying to let my ego run the show. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, the fact mm -hmm. that you're doing that and bringing that to your patients is amazing. So it's interesting with what you just shared, um, what it reminds me. So I'm only been in practice for just over a year. And with biogeometric integration, there's a map of the whole body that starts to um, show like how parts are in relationship with each other. And so I remember, uh, so I opened this practice here in Pleasant Hill in September, but it's practicing another place before then. Anyway, at the start of my practice here, um, I was really like being analytical with the map and like varying my head and like, well, this is what the map says do to do. And then at one point I was getting like so overwhelmed with following that map that I felt like I was losing like real time connection of what was actually going on. So I decided to just trust that I knew the map and that it was in me and like all my studies of biogeometric are like a part of who I am in this moment. And just like, where does the body show me it wants to go? And like, let's just listen and be aware and feel and sense. And once I started doing that, it became much more clear what the person needed in that session and the pathways of like how the relationships of parts were actually relating and where are they actually anchoring into it became kind of like um you know the what's it called the magic eye that that thing from when we were kids where it's like you made your vision blurry and then this like whole like elephant or something like popped out at you you know so it kind of felt like that it's like okay like take away the the front layer and then look like let it just kind of soften and then whoa like that's what's going on there oh my gosh and it's coming from there and it's leaking in there and then okay and then this is where it wants to start it's like whoa it's like get out of your own head and the answers are there coming that's very cool yeah so hopefully when i sent you an email about having this interview you read the questions one of the requirements of this is to give me your best clean joke i was afraid you were gonna ask me that <laughs> Okay, well, this is the, I did, I was like kind of stressing out about that question because it's so good and I like don't really have an answer. And I was like, maybe when Dr. Callaway asked me, it'll just like come to me in that moment. So this is what showed up just right now when you said. So I used to teach swim lessons to like, I don't know, anywhere between like five and 10 year olds, like, I don't know, several years ago. And this one little girl, her, girl, her name was Jennifer, I was coaching her and, um, I don't know, just one of our lessons. We're working on freestyle or something. And she just like totally stopped the lesson and was just like, um, Coach Alandi. And I was like, yeah, she's like, I have a joke for you. And I was like, okay, what's your joke? She's like, knock, knock. Who's there? Ah. Ah. Ah, who? <laughs> Bless you. Oh, nice. <laughs> I like it. No. That's a good one. We we're on the side of the pool. I was just like so elated with her little joke. She's like, I got you. That's a good one. Yeah, that was pretty cute. So well done. That's what I got. It's my clean joke. I love it. Um so any words of wisdom, parting thoughts, ideas that you'd like to share with the world? Or oh, man. With that is whoever a listens to the studio. Um, okay, I guess what shows up for me when you say that is um, health is a compilation of things. It's not, oh, I went to CrossFit today, like, good job, healthy, or, oh, I slept eight hours, done, or I had some green veggies today, nice, or, you know, I went and saw my chiropractor, my nervous system is cleared okay, like these things individually are good, but it's the compounding effect of, multi of a multitude of good things for your body that really comes to um, a fuller expression of health. So I think really thinking global about what you're doing and how, it, and then being in tune with how is, 
how what you're doing, the effects it's having on you, and like, does it feel like a yes, do more, or like a, I don't know about that, and using that as your compass to, hey, do I want more of that, or I don't know about that, and then that's, um, yeah, being in, like, conversation that way with the, the different activities you engage with for your healthy lifestyle. That's a great answer. So I know we talked about you being in Pleasant Hill. How can people find you if they want to ask you more questions or possibly seek out what you do? Mm -hmm. So my website is basically a landing page right now, but it is going to be a little bit more beautiful in the coming month or so. Um, but my website is www.chiropracticlifeforce.com. So the people can go there. They can read a little bio about me, see my office hours, see my location, my phone numbers there. Um, I'm much more of an email person than a phone user. So emailing me with questions or emailing me to set up a phone call is really the way to go. My email address is alondisteck, dc at gmail.com. And I also have an Instagram page it's just, that is just freshly up and running. It's Alani Stack DC, and I have some cool things that I've been posting there. So to come soon will be some info about some of my really awesome um, practice members and their experience with my type of chiropractic care and how they're using it in their um, you know, personal endeavors, whether, whether that looks like teaching Bollywood classes or DJing or MRI workings, this and that. So that's to come my Instagram page. Cool. Thank you very much. You did amazing. Oh, well, I thank you.